What's up guys, today we are honoured to be joined by the amazing Dr. Ahmed Hussain and Dr. Zainab al Mukhtar, who own a practice together in London. Over their career, they have been doing amazing cosmetic and aesthetic work here in London and have been publishing many magazines and journals such as Esquire, Independent, Telegraph, Hello and many more. We hope you enjoyed the episode of Viva Voce today. Hi, my name is Dr. Zainab and today I'm going to be playing Viva Voce with Dr. Ahmed. <laughs> this is your cue. Hi, my name is Ahmed and I'm a dentist from Northwest London and today we're going to be playing Viva Voce. Super excited. Go. As a child, what did you want to be? Um, okay, so there was a point where I remember wanting to be a police officer <laughs> um, and that quickly went away, but it was um, a recent memory. I remember telling Leila this recently, so it's just come to my mind. But actually, from my early teens, I wanted to be a dentist because, of course, my mum's a dentist, so I was exposed to it and I got to see so much of it as I was growing up and it ticked all my boxes and I just loved the whole vibe of it and the way that my mum worked and I was super inspired. So from a young age, dentistry has been something I kind of wanted to go towards. What about you? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, I was always into sports and football was my, was my main sort of hobby. So yeah, I wanted to be a footballer um, until reality kicked in and uh, and then it was like, okay, you need to get your, your results, your degree and dentistry opened up for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay, should we do the next one? Go for it. What three things could you not live without? Oh, that's a really good mm. question. So family. Um, family first, always. So I'll struggle, I'll struggle to live without my family. SPF. <laughs> SPF. No, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not up at the maybe mm. top three, but... Mm. I, I cannot live without getting a haircut. Okay. <laughs> that really gets to me. So every couple of weeks. Yeah. And third thing's probably the gym. Mm. I'm really passionate about going to gym. So you said family, haircut and gym. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much sums you up. All right. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Okay. Draw a picture of each other in 30 seconds. <laughs> okay, we can do that. Three, two, one, start. <laughs> 30 seconds is nothing. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you want to see it? It's very be good. <laughs> Why do you look so angry? No, no, you weren't meant to look angry. <laughs> that was just the 30 second thing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, lashes, <laughs> details. Oh, I was actually thinking, what did I miss? Lashes. Oh. Yeah, no, I went for the spiky hair because it was like one of the memories I have of, of Ahmed that's been quite consistent throughout like the 17, 16 years I've known him is his hairstyle. So that's definitely, and then these defined eyebrows um, and the rest, you know, 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Turn. Your turn. My turn. <clears throat> is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time and why haven't you done it? Wow. That's a deep one. This may take a while. Um, I guess, I don't know, what holidays, um, going to mm. a place where I've never been to, like, I've always wanted to go to Maldives. Yeah, I was going to say that. Myself, yeah, actually. yeah, so one on my bucket list. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you have the same one. Mm. We need to make it happen. Make it happen, yeah. Because Maldives will disappear one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why haven't we done it? I think there's, uh, we've done a few so far, but we just haven't done Maldives. Mm. I think... Part of it is that now with small children, I have this vision that you come out of the villa and they're sea straight away and that worries me. So I want them to be older. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Your uh, turn. My turn. All right. 
What's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you? <sighs> wow. Hmm. One of the most the feeling a feeling of shame I had was when I didn't get the grades for dentistry the first time round because I had really put my heart on it. My, you know, all my whole family knew I really wanted to do it, but I had such a hard time with my A levels because of a fire in our home. But I still was a bit complacent and thought I would make it. So that moment, knowing that was my first kind of big moment of what I perceived to be failure at that time, and I felt oh, that was horrible. It was horrible facing everyone to say I didn't make it, but. Now, looking back, it wasn't a failure. In fact, it was really character building. But at the time, I really felt like the weight of the world on my shoulders. And it was really hard to face, you know, family, especially parents, and tell them that. It made you stronger. Made me stronger. Mm. I retook. Um, I wasn't going to give up. And I was going to do anything, you know, to make it happen. Um, and it taught me that now, if there's ever a failure, I think of it as a hiccup. It's a fall, but you're going to get back up. It's never the end of the road. Um, until you've exhausted all options, then perhaps it is the end of the road. But until mm. you've exhausted all options, I believe that these are just hiccups and you get up and you, you carry on. But at that time, as a, an 18 year old, it was huge. It was my dream that had just flopped, you know, and that was uh, that was really hard as, as the oldest child as well. And knowing how my parents had supported me so much and so on. Yes, we had these circumstances that made it really, really challenging with the fire in our home and the sudden move. Um, in the middle of like exams and so on, but at that time it still felt like a huge failure. So I'm just so grateful that that's history. Okay, my turn. Um, close your eyes and guess the object in your hand. Both of you, both of you. Okay. <laughs> and you guys need to guess what that thing is, but don't say it straight away if you find, if you know what it is. Don't say it straight away. Once you think you know, <laughs> say you okay. think you know and on three, two, one, say it. This is a whitening syringe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I wasn't sure if you guys were going to get that. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, this is a Philip Zoom day white. Is it? <laughs> day white or night white? <laughs> you got it to the. You're open? Uh, you got even the day white. <laughs> oh my god, yay. I'm How so did you know day white? <laughs> um, the, the day white was a guess, but. I use this all the time. Okay. <laughs> so I'm giving demos to patients all the time and I, I know the feel of it. It's definitely a Philip Zoom. Cool. Yeah. Good so one, funny. guys. That's a really good one. <laughs> yeah. Proves how much we use that thing. Okay. Your turn or mine? Yours. Is there a feeling you miss? <sighs> yeah, I think it's... Um, Freedom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, freedom in many aspects. One of which is just the freedom to wake up, plan your day, not necessarily think about childcare and your responsibilities and all the rest of it. But actually, the first thought that came to my mind was I miss the feeling of holding a newborn, but I'm not going there again. We're very content with two. But mm -hmm. I do miss that feeling of a newborn. Mm. The specialness and, you know. The, the, the cuteness and tininess of a newborn. So, nice. Yeah. Okay. What is one small change you made in your life that had a much bigger impact than you anticipated? Okay. So I was always um, a quiet person. I was reserved. I, I was shy. I didn't want to um, get myself out. And, uh, and that held me back mm -hmm. from some of the potential that I had. So I think one of the things that I did, um, which was really big for me was to, which is to you know, get myself out and, and um, get involved in public speaking, which, which I haven't done before. And, and that has opened doors mm. you know, for me. Mm. Yeah. Really has. Yeah, well done. So proud of you for that. Okay. Oh, your turn. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I think it was your turn. Yeah, it's your turn. Yeah. What turns a friend into a best friend? Um, somebody who is always there for you, who is instinctive and knows you quite, knows you really well, 
enough that you don't have to over explain or over express and you know it's effortless to communicate that's definitely a huge thing um, and I think somebody who stands the test of time where you've been through highs and lows you've been through like a few of life's challenges and they've still been there rock solid and they're reliable I think it's also great to have someone that makes you laugh I think you know my best friends definitely make me laugh and I think but the key thing is being gotten being understood I think that's that's a huge thing for me yeah I agree yeah mm. okay my turn or yours mine your turn what was your first impression of me <laughs> this is so cool because I get to ask him stuff that he'd normally be like why are you asking mm. me this but now I can <laughs> Did you guys meet in an interview? I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there was a few encounters. That was one of them. That was one that was, yeah, one of the early ones. I'll say that was the first time. Was it? Was it one of the yeah, first time I saw you in real life? And I also saw you in a photo um, that my mom showed me. <laughs> um, but yeah, you were um, pretty and quiet at when I saw you, you would... Uh, I was quiet? Yeah, you, you, you were quiet. Um, that was the two main things I... First impression? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. You ten. Have I scored points? Yeah. <laughs> what is the hardest way you've learned an important lesson? I think you kind of answered that one already, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. It was about failure. Yeah. Um, and it taught me a few things. So one is, I mean, it was it was devastation for mm. me at that point. Mm. One thing I learned was never be overconfident and complacent about something you're about to do. Always be well prepared. Yeah, I learned that you've got more strength than you think you do. Um, and I really believe in destiny. So the road was so, you know, tortuous, turbulent, rocky. After that happened, I had to retake. When I retook, I got the grades in a different combination, as you know. And when I got the grades in a different combination, I had a specific offer from King's to have uh, to do dentistry at this point with two A's and a B in a specific combination. They wanted politics to be an A, biology to be a B, and chemistry to be an A. I got the two A's and a B in a different combination. This is after re taking so when I phoned them to say this is what's happened I've got the grades they said sorry but you've not got the right combination and for me that was like seriously I've reached this this point and it's about the combination and politics was what they wanted in a in and it didn't make sense because I thought well biology is more relevant but that's what it was and it was just a huge test so there I was at this crossroads again just thinking is this really the end now and I had this um I had this other offer from uh, optometry, which of course at this point I took. And I did one month of optometry and was very miserable, trying to like it, but just thinking about dentistry all the time. And you were, we were just getting to know each other at this point. And I remember the day when at the same time I was remarking my politics result and it went up and I got a phone call to say, you've, we've remarked, it's gone up to 30, it's, it's gone up by 33 marks to an A. And I couldn't believe it, but that basically was my door in to King's. And I then said, uh, I called them and they're like, great, you've made the offer. You've met the, met the offer, but you cannot join this year. You have to join the following year. And I begged and begged and begged, but they wouldn't let me join that year. So I joined the, the following year. So that road was just, you know, there were so many points at which it just wasn't working out. And I could have, you know, I could have kept going th for other options, but I kept pushing. And it taught me that when something's meant to be, it will be, but it just might not be when you want it. So yeah. that keeps me really grounded now because it makes me very present. If I want something and it's not happening now, I don't stress about it. I know that it may well happen. It's just a matter of time. Um, so quite a few things I learned yeah. from that experience. And that, and that year that you had off, it's like, it's like a blessing because once you start it, you're going to, you know, the rest of your career, you're going to be a dentist. But that one year, which you can use to do anything you want, yeah. that you cannot just you rewind and just 
Yeah, and I spent that year getting to know you. So I spent the whole year basically with you every day. And um, I wouldn't have had that opportunity in a relaxed way. And I needed that year actually to recover because it was such a challenge. And um, you know, I had it had basically broken me, so I needed to repair. I was like, I had lost so much weight. I got to 39 kilos, which is like, I look like a child. Um, and I needed to just restore that. And I, I just lost that from stress. And, and now I've definitely would love for it to be that easy to lose the baby weight, but yeah. So lots, um, lots came out of that year as well. So you don't realize until you look back that everything happens for a reason and there was a lot of blessing out of it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. What is something you've done that you recommend everyone do before they die? Can you guess? Landmark. Yeah. So a landmark definitely because it was this personal development course that I did when I was 25 and it was really life changing in many ways and I really recommend that if not landmark at least something in terms of investing in personal development everybody should do. I think you never stop learning until the day you die and there is always something to discover um, and the best investment you'll ever make is in yourself. So by personal development, we're talking about really unpeeling some of the things that you subconsciously put in your way um, that become an obstacle for your own progress, whether it's in your relationships or in your work uh, or just relationship you have with yourself, whatever it might be. Mm. We all have these blind spots, these, these obstacles that we are not even aware of that we, in a way, self-sabotage. We, we place these limitations on ourselves. Um, so these limiting self-beliefs. These kind of courses, and in particular Landmark, and the reason why I loved Landmark is because it was so intensive in three days. I couldn't believe it was possible to get that much out of just three days. Um, but I got a lot from it. I got that I really understood some of my, yeah, the limitations I was putting on myself without realizing. I created new possibilities. I felt like I built more courage. I was just basically able to get myself out of the way and just move forward with a lot of things. And another thing which is really invaluable that I got from Landmark, which I think every human being needs to be happy, is an understanding of how important connection is. So connection with anybody, whether it's me talking to you now or me talking to a patient or a, a team member or my children. but that level of communication um, that is so present that you build such strong connections that is so key to a fulfilling life in fact that's really the crux of a fulfilled life so I got all of that and I got all of that in such a short time I thought that that was mind-blowing me coming out of that three-day course I felt like I had just wiped the slate clean and had this whole new blank canvas of how I could see things because I could you know I was living in a world of possibility. I know it sounds very airy-fairy, but that's really how it was. Yeah. So I really high, highly recommend the Landmark Forum um, or at least some kind of personal development course. Yeah. Okay. What do you wish you could spend more time doing? Hint, hint, not teeth, I hope. No. <laughs> I was going to shout dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more dentistry. Travel more, spend... Spend, spend more time with my daughters. Mm. Mm. Nice. Okay. Right. When was the last time you felt lucky to be you? Um, okay. So yesterday I did, uh, I probably wouldn't have answered this with yesterday had I not done a specific exercise, but I did this gratitude exercise yesterday morning. Um, for on this, so a friend of mine who's also a patient of mine, um, Amira Sahrawi has created this amazing new app called My Wave. Um, and in this app, you can record your own audios and save them. And they can either be private or they can be public. And it's an amazing new app. And I'm one of the first users on the app. And yesterday I did five minutes of just talking about 10 things I feel grateful for. And I was just sitting there and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. Saved if you want to hear it. 
But it's uh, but when you do this gratitude list, you realize how much you have to be grateful for. So I would say that that was yesterday morning when I did that, and it's actually mm. a really powerful exercise. If I did that every day, I think anyone who does that regularly is going to feel so much more fulfilled because it's so easy to look at the stresses of life and the strains and the things you need to do that you haven't done yet or yeah. whatever it might be. But when you realize that you've actually come so far and you've you can celebrate your achievements, and when you realize that actually. You're grateful for the simplest of things, like just waking up healthy, like having a cup of coffee. You realize how life is That's so true. much more. Yeah. I was sitting watching uh, watching the news, and then you see people like in Afghanistan. They're like queuing up in the airport, and all they want to do is just get to this country, um, and it just makes you feel so. You know, sometimes you're so bogged down about a certain thing, but in the grand scheme of things, you've got everything you want. You're healthy, um, and yeah, it just makes uh, makes you feel lucky when mm. you see um, other people who are less fortunate. Just the simple things like security. Security, exactly. Yeah, it's something that we mm. take for granted, and we're living in a world right now where so many countries are upside down. So we definitely have to feel grateful for that. But anyway, I, at risk of getting very, very serious, I will okay. move on. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. What's the best gift you've ever given? Who did you give it to? Spare me. That's a really hard one. Because you don't like the gifts I buy you. <laughs> you I remember returning a lot of the gifts. Oh. Ahmed likes to choose gifts mm. he wants things that he can use he wants useful things he does not want things lying around that he won't use that are novelty so i've learned to get him involved in gift buying mm. Mm. most recent gift i could think of is a bike for leila which she's now using every day um this, let me think about that one come back okay you it's your time Mine. Um, oh my god, I should have so said I'm the best gift to you, but anyway, it's so cheesy. <laughs> okay, what contribution do you want to make to the world? I love these questions, by the yeah. way. I do like teaching, I do you like to share? It's something I'm, I've got interest in, I'm you know, good at, I, I do like to share. and and it's rewarding um, when, you, when you hear someone sort of learn something new. Contribution to the profession mm. would be teaching. Mm. To the world? To the world. To humanity? Yeah. Mm. I think charity. Mm. Yeah. But then also um, having to, I think leaving something behind that would just continue. Yeah. yeah. I think about this one a lot, especially yeah. recently. What I would want to contribute is something that can live on. So there's two things that um, have come to my mind. One is, of course, investing in your kids and what they are then going to bring into the world. So that's so important because that will, you know, that goes on and on, has a domino effect. So promoting in our home kindness as much as possible, talking about empathy is a huge thing that I just want to leave. Um, with my girls, uh, giving them strong voices so that they use that then to make positive differences in the world. But then also something that's tangible in a different way is something charitable, like you said, um, where there is somewhere in the world that there is a need for something like a well or a school, like my mum is now switching out a school um, in East Africa. Um, something like that I just want to do at some point something that will live on and have a continuous impact on other people so hopefully we get a chance to do something like that yeah your turn if you could ask your future self one thing what would it be have i been stressing too much about whether my parenting decisions are right or wrong and i'll only know years later but that's something that keeps me awake at night now and I think about a lot. So I would love to know in a few years whether I'm on the right track or not. 
So that would be something. Mm, the hindsight is good, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, your turn. Okay. What's your biggest pet peeve? What's the biggest thing that you dislike? What annoys you? Bugs you? Mm, nagging. <laughs> okay. I got it. <laughs> I hate nagging. Yeah. Yeah. I get that now though, mm. because <laughs> when I hear nagging or you know, just general whinging yeah. from children, I think, oh my God, I keep like, I, I can hear myself saying, please just tell me what you want. Try not to keep moaning about it. Don't keep repeating. And I, I get that. It's so annoying. Yeah. Mm. I'll try. Okay. <laughs> Your turn. Okay. It's turning into like marriage <laughs> counseling. Domestic. <laughs> Is there anyone who has changed your life but doesn't know it? A lot. Um, I mean, I hope my parents know they have. I'm sure they do. Um, I think someone who definitely doesn't know it is Leila, being my first child. I had a huge impact on me and still does every single day. Mm. Um, and I don't think children realize that until they themselves become parents or mothers. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. And then you as well, because we got married so young so the growth has been together and i think you know definitely there's been impact there 100 percent uh ahmed is very organized so he's taught me to be on time with you know paying fines or bills or whatever it might be meeting deadlines he says never you know just do it there and then mm -hmm. so lots of small little habits that he's ingrained into you know, into our life. And that's just one, like, really easy, quick thing to mention, but there's lots of things. Um, okay. Tina. Yeah. <laughs> What's your earliest memory? What about your bike fall? Oh, okay. You have memories that you've spoken to me about. I just need to be reminded of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was, uh, I was, I was riding and, uh, and, and I was crossing the road and, I didn't bother to look. There was like a big van parked right, right next to me, and I thought, what are the chances a car's going to come at that point? And I just like just quickly go, and then next minute I saw this car coming, and when I knew there was like I couldn't get out of it, and so I was just w watching it come cl closer and closer, and then it hit me, and then I went flying, and I landed, and I must have like passed out for a couple of seconds. How old were you? Ten. Yeah. Yeah. You probably got earlier ones, but you, you yeah. buried them. So, yeah. Anyway, go on. Okay. What is the greatest accomplishment of your life? It has to relate to motherhood yeah. so far. And you can say that. Yeah. Something to do with overcoming the challenges of motherhood. And I'm sure mm. there are many more to come. Mm. They're still young. But when they're young, there are lots. That makes me feel accomplished, mm. challenged a lot. And sometimes as a mum, you feel defeated. You're not sure if you're doing it right, but um, still accomplished yeah, to get through the challenges. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you really enjoyed our Viva Voce. It was lots of really deep questions that got us thinking, but I hope you enjoyed watching it. <laughs> Thank you. I definitely was uh, not expecting some of these questions. Um, and I think we've learned some, something new about each other. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks for the opportunity, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.